Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Living Local, your lifestyle show for everything Charleston. I'm Ashley Mazervi. Medical Monday, sponsored by East Cooper Medical Center. So today we're talking about a very important subject when it comes to new parents or even people who have already had children and are expecting another mm -hmm. one. We're talking about unsafe sleep environments, which uh, research shows is the number one cause of death in infants. Yes, yes. Um, safe sleep environments are very important to think about. Um, some of the causes of issues when it comes to um, having good safe practices when it comes to sleeping with your baby is to make sure that you're room sharing and not bed sharing. Uh, bed sharing can lead to a lot of complications, especially when there's excess blankets, pillows, um, other adults um, sleeping in the bed. So. Uh, it's very important not to also have your children sleeping with other siblings because children are five times more likely to have sleep deaths related to sleeping with a sibling. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we're teaching our families the most important ways uh, to sleep safely with their children and uh, it's having their own sleep environment. So what does a safe sleep environment look like? A safe sleep environment is an environment where the child is sleeping on their own. It would include a very firm mattress, nothing that has a lot of excess blankets or cushiony um, uh, bedding in the bed. Um, it would be an environment that doesn't have bumper pads because bumper pads are a strangulation or an entrapment hazard which would cause suffocation in a child. Um, we do see a lot of parents make the mistake of having um, stuffed animals in the beds. Um, those are also issues that can cause suffocation, so we want to make sure that they keep only the baby in either a um, onesie, a pajama, or in a swaddle, uh, swaddle sack like the one that's shown here. Um, that is a mo more safe environment for them to be in. So all those Pinterest pictures yes, and stuff, we yeah. need to just throw those out. Oh yeah, yeah. Because um, we've all seen those. We have. Where, I mean, they, it looks amazing, but I'm sure right. it's just full of Right. bad news in yeah there. so we see a lot of the photography that that is on the social media now where they have the babies that are sleeping on their stomachs which uh, sleeping on your stomach is one of the leading causes of death for children for SIDS um, and we also see them lying in uh, very cushy baskets and things like that but that gives the parents a false sense of security and safety for their children so we want to make sure that they know that these are just for show and you know that's not a safe sleeping environment you really need to have them in an environment with nothing around them that's firm and not soft things around that they can suffocate in um, also two parents make the mistake of dressing their children very warmly so they think that the babies need to be a lot warmer than us but they should be dressing them just like you would be dressing in a normal environment because overheating also causes uh, unsafe sleep issues and I guess if you had all that other stuff in mm -hmm. there it would oh, make gosh, it even yeah. worse yeah well you said um, I thought it was interesting that sleeping on your stomach mm -hmm. do you think the common misconception is that if they were to you know as far as like burp or yeah, yeah. or whatever that they would already be yes. on their stomach yeah the there's a, a lot of people who feel like uh, spitting up is uh, one of the reasons why they want to put them on their stomach and it sometimes is a cultural issue um, but back to back to sleep is always the most safe practice that they can get into and I know we touched on this a little bit but what are some of the things that parents need to think about when they're planning for their baby's safe sleep environment. I think the one mistake that a lot of parents make is thinking that an unsafe sleep situation can't happen to them. Um, it can happen to anybody. Uh, it happens 26 out of 100,000 births. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is far more common than we really think about. And they also need to be thinking about anything that's around their baby that could be a suffocation hazard. Okay. Um, also sleeping in a chair or sleeping on a couch. Um, they really need to be cautious of that because when you relax, um, your baby can fall into wedged areas like uh, in between the cushions and they can be suffocated or they could even fall out on the floor and hurt themselves. And so what um, type of things is East Cooper doing to promote this, you know, educate the public on what a uh, safe sleep environment is so that you don't have more incidents where parents have unfortunately right. a, a devastating thing happen to their family? Well, I think it's mostly uh, that we're role modeling what the safe sleep environment looks like. So we're doing constant education and uh, doing that on uh, on 
immediate reaction to make sure that we're catching those families and talking to them about what the safe sleep environment looks like if we catch them with stuffed animals or pillows or lots of blankets in the bed. So it's role modeling. Okay, and where would you recommend for more information on, on this? Um, there is some great uh, sites called um, Cribs for Kids, um, and Cribs for Kids has a lot of information on what a safe sleep environment looks like. Um, there is also the National Institute for Health that also provides a lot of information on what a safe sleep environment is. Okay, and so would you say at, at the end of the day, um, when in doubt, less is more when it comes right. to. Right, that's exactly correct. Less is more and it's uh, something that we always have to provide safety uh, information on and we want our families when they go home to mimic what we do in the hospital. So role modeling is And also feel confident when yeah. they go home. Yeah. Alrighty, well thank you so thank much. Thank you, I appreciate it.